Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I'm going to do another follow-up. Um, I've done two posts about uh, what was formerly known as Gypsy Moth, uh, now known as Spongy Moth, Lymantria Dispar, um, and control that you can do in your own landscape. So I'm following up on Mondays with Martha number 62 and number 80 and today I'm going to talk about uh, burlap banding to help monitor and control um, the caterpillars but also some of the other life stages. So this is a local um, control method that you can deploy on your own property um, and it can be done from the end of April or early May depending on uh, where you live in the country and you want to keep up the burlap bands um, until the end of August and that's because that's when uh, spongy moth is finished laying its eggs. So the nice thing about uh, the burlap banding is that you can target all life stages. Um, the, you can find caterpillars underneath the burlap. That's the key thing that you're looking for. But at the end of summer, um, the species will pupate underneath here and you'll be able to locate and destroy cocoons and the adult moths. Remember the female doesn't fly. And so um, if there are any remaining um, eggs in the vicinity um, of your tree, she's only going to crawl um, to a place to lay her eggs. So there is the opportunity to control um, all life stages with this particular uh, technique. So uh, we have mature caterpillars usually by late May in the South and late June to July here in Michigan. So for my customers who are watching, my viewers um, in the Southern part of the United States, you should be doing this right now, um, getting your burlap bands up. Uh, those of us in Michigan, we have a little bit longer, um, but it's fine to, to start early um, if now is when you have time to do it. Just a reminder that spongy moth is an invasive species. It only has one brood, um, but the small caterpillars can balloon out on silken threads uh, and move themselves around that way. And uh, the early instars will feed on understory vegetation, um, but then as they get bigger, they move on to uh, many of our native overstory trees. Uh, species like our oaks, uh, in particular, white and red oak, aspens, willows, poplars, birch, uh, beech, and hickory, just to name a few. So um, with this approach, I want to talk about uh, PPE that you might need. Um, putting things up, uh, really nothing too dangerous, but when you are doing the monitoring, you'll probably want gloves. Um, a lot of people have sensitivity to hairy caterpillars and if you know you have that sensitivity um, or are allergic to hairy caterpillars, you might even want eye protection um, or, or wear a face mask and long sleeves. Uh, tools for doing this particular management technique, some sort of cutting tool, burlap strips that are um, 18 to 20 inches wide, uh, jute twine or some other type of rope and uh, push pins are pretty handy and then um, when you're doing the monitoring and uh, you're gonna collect the caterpillars into uh, soapy water having a container with that soapy water and a brush um, are helpful for actually doing the management activity and the focus for this particular control method should be specific landscape trees that have uh, special importance to you. So this is not going to be effective on a landscape scale, uh, but you can target a few trees. So maybe um, trees that are providing really important shade or habitat in your yard. Uh, maybe a tree that's already been stressed because of some root zone impact or um, something else going on uh, in your landscape and defoliation from spongy moth might sort of push it over the edge. So uh, think about that and where you want to focus your effort. And uh, 
So I tacked up uh, the burlap straps here. So they're, these are 18 inches wide and I did about 24 to 36 inches long. And uh, the thumbtacks are nice for holding it up. And then I use the jute twine to tie around the middle. And then I'll take out the push pins. And what you're doing is creating a double layer skirt that provides cover for the spongy moth uh, caterpillars. Uh, especially in the later instars where they crawl down and seek shelter during the day along the trunk of the tree. So they really like to get under here and when you're monitoring you want to check under both layers for the caterpillars. It is okay if you don't have enough burlap to go all around the tree. Um, just providing uh, a strip or two is good and they'll seek that uh, shelter out and you can collect a lot of caterpillars even with just one piece of burlap per tree if that's all um, you have or all you can do for your particular effort. Uh, a single one is, is better than nothing. And then um, you wanna monitor during daylight hours, uh, looking for those caterpillars, taking shelter, um, and at night, those later instars move up into the canopy. So that's why monitoring during the day is important. This is when, that's when you're gonna find them underneath uh, the burlap. And if you have a really large infestation, you might find 100 caterpillars or more under your burlap flap. So just be prepared and um, mix your uh, water solution accordingly. So you wanna aim for uh, soapy water that has three tablespoons of dish soap to one pint of water. And if you have a large infestation, you might wanna uh, go from a small container up to larger bucket. But, um, so what you will do when you're monitoring is just check under both and it's helpful to grab a push pin, have one on you, and hold that up if you have lots of caterpillars to deal with. And then you'll hold up your solution with water and brush the caterpillars into the, into the container. And you'll want to leave them soaking uh, 24 hours and then you can drain and dispose of the dead caterpillars in the garbage. And as far as frequency goes, uh, I would recommend a minimum of at least once a week. And if you can do it daily, great. You know, the, the more often you do it, the more caterpillars you're gonna encounter and deal with and the better your spongy moth control efforts will be. And uh, as they um, pupate under here, you'll be able to do the same process with the cocoons, um, with the females. And I just wanted to remind everybody if you, um, you miss it and there's a female that's already laid eggs, leave the egg masses. You wanna remove those when temperatures dip below freezing. And again, that's to allow a tiny parasitoid wasp to complete its life cycle. And that'll help control spongy moth as well. So for details on that whole process, um, refer back to Monday with Martha number 80. And for uh, identification, I just want to refresh everybody's memory on what gypsy moth caterpillars look like. So they are hairy. They can be um, several inches long. They have yellow faces with um, two hairy warts on the side of their head. And then behind the head are five pairs of blue warts and six pairs of red warts. So that's what you want to look for and target with your monitoring efforts.
and I also wanted to mention, um, especially because it's such a problem on our oak trees, remember that our native oaks are foraging hubs for our native uh, butterflies and moths. So just for an example, um, using the native plant finder website that Dr. Doug Tallamy helped to develop um, here for my zip code in Midland, Michigan, oak support, um, 452 Lepidopteran species. And so I like this approach with the um, burlap because it lets you be selective. You're in control and brushing off um, the caterpillars that have sought shelter um, underneath this cover. And you can work around our, our native species. So um, in researching for this post, I, I saw some recommendations for using duct tape or tangle foot, some, some sticky trap. Um, the bad thing, the downside to those is that they are non-selective in anything trying to access the oak tree um, and use it for habitat will get caught in that. So I really like the this burlap banding method because you can be selective in um, the species and only, only take the spongy moth caterpillars, cocoons, um, and adult moths. And so I'm gonna leave this up. I'll let you know if I find anything cool, native or non-native uh, under here over the spring and summer. And uh, for those of you who live in Michigan, I just wanted to point out that um, Eagle is having a webinar with an expert panel about spongy moth. This is part of their uh, invasive species series called uh, Not My Species, am I Not My Species? Um, and the Spongy Moth one airs on Thursday, April 14th from 9 a.m. Uh, to 10 a.m. So it's all about Lymantria dispar, its history in Michigan, and what you can do to reduce this invasive species um, and its impact around your home. So you might wanna tune in to that. I'll provide a link in the um, description to this post. But I hope that helps you with your spongy moth control efforts. Have a good week.